At the time of its release, one of the worst parts about the Fallout 3 computer game was how you couldn't play after the ending. But Bethesda, in a fitting love letter to fans of the genre, wrapped an entire DLC around that beautiful little update. Can you beat Fallout 3's Broken Steel DLC without taking any damage? This DLC is different from all the other Fallout 3 and even New Vegas DLCs in the way that it's accessed. There are no level requirements, but you can't start it until you beat the main quest line. Normally, I'd start in Vault 101, escape as quickly as possible, and head straight for the DLC's starting location. Can't really do that this time and, children cover your ears, I'm sure as heck not playing through all of Fallout 3 again just for this video. I reloaded a save from a prior playthrough, and because my Fallout 3 is so destroyed that I haven't been able to press load on the main menu without crashing the entire game since early last year, I just went with whatever the most recent save was. In this case, play your name from the Fallout 3 and New Vegas at the same time video. The build for that character was based around speed and being able to take a lot of damage. Not really the best special stats for a no damage run, but I worked with what required the least amount of effort at that particular moment. I had to contend with Autumn again, settled things were settled diplomatically, as I'd already set my max health to 1, so that any damage of any kind killed me. Sarah Lyons was sent into the purifier on my behalf and died. I'd have done it myself, but I had no way to deal with the radiation damage, and the second the door was sealed with me on the bad side, I'd have collapsed. With Lyons finally dead, the wasteland was saved. My mind pondered all the nothing and I woke up back in the Citadel to none other than the father of the woman I just convinced to sacrifice herself. Elder Lyons explained what transpired while I was failing at being dead. The Enclave were beaten back a good bit more than expected thanks to Dr. Madison Lee being productive and contributing to society. Sarah Lyons is still dead. Whether she's as dead or more dead than my dead dog is up for debate. Long story short, the Enclave have not been defeated yet and it falls on me to maybe help if I feel like it. I decided to be a good Samaritan and help them to balance out all the bad things I've never done in my life. After figuring out where Scrybroth's child was, wandering through the darkness, and acquiring some ammo from Durga, I spoke to Rothschild about our next move. The Enclave's main headquarters was destroyed a few weeks back by someone who was playing two games at once. They're running scared, but we have the upper hand. We have democracy. We have Liberty Prime. I left the Citadel to meet up with Paladin Tristan at the Rockland Car Tunnel. Now because Broken Steel raises the level cap from 20 to 30 and it can only be accessed after beating the game, I think it's assumed that you'll have been all over the Capital Wasteland by the time you start it. I discovered about as few locations as you possibly can, which is rather annoying as this DLC sends you to the far reaches of the Capital Wasteland. I checked out a few locations to see how they'd changed after the war. They didn't really, and I was on my way to the car tunnel. I got a pretty good idea of what I was in for when my first taste of combat was a Protectron in front of me and a robotic something else behind me. Laser weapons firing from two opposite directions with a quick save right in the middle is a recipe for a bad time. A bit closer to the tunnel, but still a good distance away, I put a bullet in a raider's heart with a rifle and it barely left a mark. Inside the tunnel, I spoke to Tristan about the job and spent the next 77 years walking behind him. We're accompanying Liberty Prime as she assaults another Enclave hideaway hole. The abundance of dead Enclave soldiers still clutching their rifles even in death made me think that I should have put more points into energy weapons. I didn't really do all that much here. I was about as useful as a comatose toddler with a nerf gun at Pearl Harbor. Then, the Enclave pulled the trick out of the old wartime strategy guide, published by Prima Games many years ago, and bombarded their own base with an orbital strike, taking Liberty Prime out of commission permanently. And, of course, it fell on me to be a one-man army and work my way through the base. Now you might be thinking that I wasn't alone because there were Brotherhood soldiers with me. But being alone is mental. You can be surrounded by friends, families, laughs, and love on Christmas morning and still be all alone in your head. Getting through the Enclave base was no fun. My weapons were a slight annoyance to the Enclave at best. My small gun skill was maxed out or close to it, but a hunting rifle against some of the best armor the Enclave has to offer can only do so much. Even two dozen shots with an assault rifle wasn't enough to bring down one plain old soldier. Not a good time. 
Thankfully, the paladins following me were far more capable fighters than I could ever hope to be and would engage the enemy in combat as soon as I opened fire. The Gatling laser I'd picked up off one of the dead bodies did big damage and made relatively quick work of the remaining soldiers guarding the last door. Once we got the intel we needed, I left their base, returned to the citadel in the cover of darkness, boarded with Durga again, and Operation Cheese began. I wanted the items locked in her armory, but I had no key. So what is a moron to do in a situation like that? Easy. You vats yourself inside, punch her in the hepatitis, steal all the everything that even remotely resembles a weapon, then quick save, quick load yourself through the wall to escape the armory, along with all the stuff you didn't steal. From there, I spoke to the Elder about how the loss of Liberty Prime will affect morale. Leveled up, put all the points in explosives, because I'd recently bought a missile launcher from the Scholastic Book Fair, and got my next assignment from Tristan. I'm going to only power works to secure some technological nonsense for the Brotherhood. Tristan said to speak to Scribe Valancourt about some gadget to help me complete my task. She mentioned that the Enclave had smart death claws. I bought the nicest bleach Walmart had to prepare myself for what's to come and set off for Olney Powerworks. Just like the Rockland car tunnel, Olney was terribly far away from me, only it's on the opposite side of the map. I wasted some ammo on Enclave soldiers who spawn killed me in Springvale earlier in my life and pressed north. I was rather shocked at all the Enclave forces out and about in the wasteland. Seemed like every hundred feet I was running into a group of soldiers or sentry bots or giant rat scorpions that had no doubt been paid off by the Enclave to do things to my f The rat scorpions took far too much ammo to kill, so I just ignored them and bunny hopped to the safety of a rock they couldn't climb. I also paused the challenge to satisfy a curiosity of mine regarding the birds in the sky that don't reel because birds aren't exist. A Yao Guai followed me, so I lured it to a group of bandits who beat it to death shortly before I ended them for hurting an innocent animal. My form of wasteland justice wasn't enough to satisfy all the other Yao Guai because they came from all corners of the world to kill me. Finally, I arrived at Olney Powerworks, or at least the fork in the road, where I had to decide to take control of the Death Claws or brute force my way inside. I chose to dive into the sewer system head first. Inside, I explored a bit, found a 44 revolver, tripped on a skeleton and died, discovered a Death Claw, tucked away in the punishment room, and ignored it to go about my business. Quarry Junction ain't got shit on these tunnels. There are Death Claws all over the place, and for a reason I didn't understand at the time, the Scrambler did nothing. So I left, cleared out the Enclave camped out nearby, had a smart Death Claw companion, it couldn't handle the neutron style, dropped dead right before my eyes, and I went back inside the tunnel to die. There was only one way for me to get through here. I lacked the firepower to blow away the Death Claws with guns, but I had a bunch of plasma mines. The problem was getting the Death Claws to set them off in such a way that they're crippled or they die. Dying means they die, but being crippled by the explosion allowed me to finish them off with something else while they waddled towards me. Deeper into the tunnels, I spoke to a ghoul who took advantage of all the death I'd left behind me. I killed another couple three death claws, and Operation Cheese was once again a go. In the only power works underground lie many death claws, far more than I could handle. So I cheated, sort of. It's less of a cheat and more of just taking advantage of a game being broken. A lot of the time, when you clip through a wall, you fall through the void until the game places you back in some spot in that cell's area. But this particular area has piles of rubble that exist beyond the walls of the area. So if you happen to clip through the wall, you can maneuver around the boundaries of the map without falling through the void. But it gets better because there's an air duct on one of the walls that just barely sticks out through the side of the wall you're not supposed to be on, you can use that to jump to the top of the cell and ignore all the death claws. Then it's as simple as finding the door and opening it from the other side. The next area was payback for what I'd just done. Enclave soldiers were everywhere, and these clowns are as accurate as I am hideous. In this scenario, death is pretty much guaranteed if they see you. And to make matters worse, there is an Enclave Hellfire Trooper sporting some of the best armor in the game. I had to use traps to my advantage like never before. But wait, there's more. The time it takes the mine to go off is determined by the explosive skill of the person setting it off. For Enclave soldiers found in this DLC, 
their explosive skill could be in the low 60s or up to 100. Anything in that range gives them enough time to shoot you before the mine goes off and kills them. So you can't just plant a mine, sit back, and wait for the enemy to set it off with no effort. And because my weapons are still god awful, the only way for the weakest Enclave soldier to go down with one shot is with a lot of luck and a sneak attack. Then came the Tesla Coil, another jolly romp through the 69th circle of hell is how I'd describe it. Let's forget about the sentry bots and the other assorted robots down there, and only power works proper. They sucked and made life frustrating, but could be dealt with with some time and effort. The real star of the show is obtaining the Tesla coil itself. There are a couple different ways to get it, as I learned the hard way. Option 1 is to just jump down into the electro dome and grab the thing with your bare hands. It's electricity coiled up in a ball as a defense mechanism because it's startled, so it'll hurt to stick that in your pocket. You die. Option 2 is to use the three emergency shutoff switches to shut off most of the power to the coil so you can pick it up guilt free. It's weakened and drugged, but it still packs enough of a punch to kill you. Option 3 is to grab the Tesla armor off one of the troopers you killed, put it on, and grab the coil. It will protect you from all harm. And I'm making that up, how stupid are you that you actually thought it would work? Or, a better question, how stupid am I for trying that in the first place? The last remaining option requires a science skill of 75 to initiate a complete shutdown using a terminal in the next room over. My science skill is far from 75. I don't know if it's even in the double digits. There may be an infinite number of universes, but there is no universe where I left to get my science skill up to 75. Best case scenario, I was looking at leveling up three more times to get my science skill up to where it needed to be. I don't have time for that. I don't have the patience for that. I didn't have the mental fortitude to make it happen. It could be done, but I wasn't going to do it. And left to return the coil to Paladin Tristan. Back in the Citadel for the third or fourth time, I was told to single-handedly infiltrate Adams Air Force Base by Paladin Tristan. Sold the excess weapons I'd gotten, got my missile launcher, a well-deserved massage, and set sail for the base. The only silver lining was that I didn't have to track across the wasteland again. The entrance to the tepid sewer is across the sea from the Wicked Witch of the West. God gave me a glimmer of hope when a raider I killed dropped a combat shotgun. Pound for pound, the combat shotgun is the worst shotgun in the game. I don't know if that's true or not, but what is true is that it's a great weapon in Fallout 3, especially in close quarters. It's so effective that the Germans tried to ban shotguns from Call of Duty tournaments back in the day, but that didn't work out very well for them. In the metro station tunnels, I got my hands on a bunch more frag mines, killed some raiders and mole rats, and got smited by the Big G. Talon Company mercenaries were waiting for me in Georgetown. I spent many a minute trying to defeat them. Different tactics, different weapons, different times of day, but I never got through to them that violence is never the answer. A certain invisible alphabet letter in the sky realized his or her punishment was too severe, and the last time I emerged from the tunnels, the mercs were preoccupied with the nearby super mutants, who ultimately killed them. With the monsters of mice and men, down for the count, I sold stuff to a scavenger, took back my items and his caps, somehow managed to take down a super mutant master, and entered Foggy Bottom Station. To be frank, this was a cakewalk. A handful of raiders were down there, living in the darkness, but most of the enemies were ghouls. Small guns at 100, and a combat shotgun made quick work of even the toughest ghouls. What it doesn't do though, is help you when you enter heck. Remember what I said about those robots in front of me and behind me, at the beginning of the video. That was foreshadowing. I faced that type of situation here, only instead of two robots, there were five or six super mutants all around me. Several in front of the staircase, the rest behind me, overlooking the entrance to the tunnel I'd just emerged from. With the weapons at my disposal, a brute force assault was simply not an option. Enough bullets fly your way from enemies behind you that you'll die every single time. What you want to do here is get their attention, crouch on the staircase with a shotgun, and turn whatever walks in front of you into Swiss cheese. Had it not been for the combat shotgun, this would have been a nightmare. The Brotherhood were already at the White House Plaza. I entered the presidential metro and got to work. The robo-brains down there are pretty tough. 
even at point-blank range, they take at least three combat shotgun shots to die. Still, they aren't the greatest killing machines in the world. You've got a pretty wide window of time to attack them before they attack you back. After speaking to Margaret, I told her I was with the US Army and asked about how to get the station's ride back online. All I had to do was clear out the rabble rousers infesting the tunnels. Had I not gotten the machine to flag me as a friendly, that would have been an unpleasant ordeal. Instead, it wasn't. There were loads of friendly robots down there who did most of the work. The intruders were only ghouls anyway, and I've already told you how good the combat shotgun is against them. With the ghouls gone, I rode the train and continued my search for the exit to Adams Air Force Base. The combination of an Enclave Trooper and a Mark 7 turret really got my toes in a twist. The turret opened fire with incredible accuracy the second I emerged from around the corner, as did the trooper. I had to blast the wall near them with a missile launcher to eliminate the threat and finally emerge out into Adams Air Force Base. My last remaining task was to infiltrate the Enclave mobile platform to gain control of their orbital missile satellite. To do that, I'd have to get into the control tower to lower a ramp. The only things working to my advantage are that I was given a Tesla cannon and the Brotherhood of Steel are beginning their assault to cover my entry into the tower. You're given the Tesla cannon for a very specific reason. There are giant turrets all over the place that are unfathomably destructive. Maybe if your sneak skill was 100 and you had a stealth boy, you could sneak past them. I could not do that. The only way past them is to destroy them all, one at a time, popping out from behind cover at a snail's pace, lining up your shot, popping the turret in the mouth, then retreating. Do it a lot, and maybe you'll find some success. Once the turrets are gone, you can begin the actual assault on the base, which is, of course, filled with Enclave soldiers fitted with the best the Enclave has to offer. Hellfire troopers are common, and even the Tesla cannon can't kill them in one shot. It probably has the potential to, but I can't do it at the present moment. Because every Enclave soldier is incapable of missing a shot, you're gonna be dying many times as you push deeper into the airbase. Waiting for them to come to you is generally advised. But even then, the game might just spit on you and make your shot go right through them. After about 15 minutes of relentless, unending combat, I got inside the control tower, lowered the ramp, and headed for the mobile platform, which is guarded even more heavily than the control tower. But because the defenses have been lowered, the Brotherhood's assault is in full effect. It wasn't easy to get inside, but time mends all wounds, and I got inside. You know what happens now? I lose. There's an energy barrier blocking the path to the rest of the Enclave's portable tent. You can either smash it, hack it, or rig it to explode. Smashing it creates an explosion, killing you. Hacking it requires a science skill of 75, so that's not an option. And blowing up the control panel leaves the barrier partially in place. You can walk through it, but it does damage. Not a great situation to be in. You might think I could just clip through the wall. No. Falling through the void places you before the barrier, and in my experience, the wall itself is too flat to clip through. So, once again, I've been beaten by a lack of preparedness. I wasn't gonna stop there, so I became God, walked through, and became a mortal once again before continuing through the facility. There were two markers on my compass. I had no idea where to go, despite being told exactly where to go. I just sorta of looked around for a bit, and ended every one and everything I came across. A Deathclaw with a special hat followed me around for a little while and helped out. With the Tesla cannon, nothing posed much of a threat. Sure, anyone was technically a threat because they could kill me with a mean look, but the Tesla cannon can one-shot all but the toughest of enemies, things like sentry bots or hellfire troopers. The last obstacle in my path was the rooftop. Enclave soldiers and sentry bots called that place home. I found out fairly quickly that the Tesla cannon can down a vertebrate in one shot, which was helpful in eliminating Enclave reinforcements before they had the chance to do anything. Inside the satellite control tower was more of the same. Enemies killing me instantly, trial and error, lots of failures, but it didn't matter. I found the satellite uplink terminal, picked a target, retreated to the roof for my ride, and rode with the Brotherhood of Steel back to the citadel that I just destroyed. Of all the people to give the order to execute me, a measly Brotherhood Knight was the one to do it. I died, of course. They ambushed me. I never had a chance. So I went back to the terminal, set the Enclave mobile station as the target, left with the Brotherhood, spoke to Elder Lions, and did not beat 
Fallout 3's Broken Steel DLC without taking any damage. Oh, and if you're wondering, neither Megaton, Rivet City, or Project Purity are in the proper orbit path. Trust me, I wanted to annihilate Moira with this thing more than anyone else, but it can't be done. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters as well as other channel members for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server through a link in the video description. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Eric of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.